kidnapped by Satan. Let's turn to John 10 and 10. John 10. John 10, 10. We all will soon have this in our hearts. Kidnapped by Satan. Ready? Read. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and they may have more abundantly. Amen. One more time. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that I may that they might have it more Amen. So, how did Satan kidnap people? A lot of us sitting here thinking being kidnapped. Satan kidnapped plenty of people. Uh, and the thing is, a lot of people was kidnapped and they don't even know they was kidnapped. A lot of them are still in captivity today. And because they walk around, they're not in a physical jail, and they walk around, and they are not, they are not chained with a physical chain, or their feet are not uh, caught in a physical snare, or a net, or a trap, and they feel as though that they are free. But your soul and your spirit can be caged. Satan can kidnap your destiny. He can destroy your soul cause you to live a life that God never intended for you to live. If you are experiencing difficulties and every time you put two foot, make two step, five step, ten step, and you get pulled back, every time you try something and it might last for about a month, two months, and all of a sudden it just stops, it's dead. And nothing seems to could materialize for you. And this is year in and year out. And you cannot see any progress, yet you're working, you're working hard. And it's as though nothing is happening. When it's like that, know for sure that the thief has stolen, has destroyed, has held back, has delayed you um, spiritually. So spiritually, you have been kidnapped and your life right now has been stolen. So from day to day, you are trying to get ahead, but you cannot seem to go ahead. Year after year, instead of advancing, you seem to be falling behind. Some of your friends now have supersede you far more than you thought possible. And the sad thing is some of them people you since you were smarter than them in school. Some of them probably never even graduated. So know for sure that something has happened to you. Mightn't happen, you can't see it physically, but spiritually there is bondage. There, your soul or your spirit has been captive. By who? Devil. But Satan can only kidnap you, cage you legally or rightfully or lawfully. He do this by your agreement by your words that you speak or you could have inherited from one of your forefathers who worshiped Satan via uh, dabbling in witchcraft, divination, sorcery, um, astrology, um, tarot card reading, palm reading, horoscope, Black magic, white magic, uh, you name it. They all come under witchcraft to sum it all up. 
secret societies like Freemasonry. We know it as the Lodge. When you make pledges to the devil to serve him, then when you do this, you are giving your soul over to the devil. If somebody in your lineage, your bloodline did this, then your soul, your spirit has been given over to Satan rightfully or lawfully. So we have a right to cage you. Many people, some was able to go off to college or have their degree. Um, to this day, they're still looking for a job. Not that jobs aren't out there, but because Satan now, the thief, come to kill, steal, and destroy. He's now caged that person destiny via the spiritual realm, their soul, their spirit, he has full control of. Meaning he let them go out there, work hard, and then he take their money and just bust it up. Comes to nothing. He steal your life. Some of us looking to be married. Some have already been married. And it haven't worked out. Or you feel as though you're married to the wrong person. Or we get in with the wrong people. This all happened uh, because of curses, evil covenants. We get tied up with the wrong people. And they were never the one that God had for us from before the foundation of the world according to his words. I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Um, so when God say he have blessed you, it means that he blessed you with all good things. He's not going to give you somebody that is going to mistreat you, doesn't value you, doesn't know your worth. But Satan does it. Why? Because he come to what? Kill, steal, and destroy every area of your life. And so you feel trapped. Satan now starts to play on your mind, make you feel as though you cannot do better than what you have. Or you're so in love that you don't want to lose what you have. Don't, especially if you already made a family together. You want to hold on to that because in your mind you feel that they could change, they could do better because when Rowdy and finish, they come and say sorry. The real them come and say sorry. But Satan now has that person caged as well. And so the beating and the mistrust will continue until someone give their life to Christ and destroy the covenants. So you are fighting, we are fighting not flesh and blood according to the word of God, but against powers, principalities, um, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So we are not fighting flesh. Satan pulls the strings of men and women who are saved as well as unsaved. This isn't just the ones who are not saved. These are also Christian people that suffer. The, and some of them suffer more than the unsaved. Because some of these unsaved can tell you peace of their mind, they can beat you down. Whereas the Christian, they're going to turn the other cheek. Because that's what the word of God say. Turn the other cheek, show love. And so Satan has destroyed your family held up your blessings, delayed your blessings, lost your best blessings, buried your blessings, buried your destiny, destroyed your destiny, or even given your destiny to somebody else. Uh, the job you're supposed to have, somebody else got it. The business that you know God placed in your heart to do, and you know you could do this better than anybody, cannot materialize. Either the funds are not there, every time you start, nothing happens. All of this is by your destiny being caged. So, when Satan have a hold on you, there is no peace, there is no enjoyment, or if you feel as though it's joy, it's going to be short-lived, and he is going to pull you back. If after 10 years, 5 years, 12 years, and you look over your life, or you roll back the curtains, and you have not advanced, or you advance, and you find yourself back to where you was, then know for sure that there is a spirit of backwardness on you. There's a, there's a spirit of delay on you. 
And Satan delays God's children or God's people or mankind every single day. Why? Because he don't want you to have or to get what God has given to you to do your purpose on this earth, to fulfill your plan and to live a good and abundant life. We, as children of God, have to know how to go about retrieving or taking back what Satan has stolen. And I'm talking about the blessings. We can do that, but we can only do it in Christ Jesus. We cannot do it alone. And if they are, if he have a legal right to hold it, he is going to hold it until you figure out how to get it. And a lot of people, they cry out to God for help. But if you're not saying the right thing, help will not come. In other words, if you know that you're supposed to have a certain thing and it was stolen from you, and you keep saying, um, God, I know you, you, you give me this house, you give me this house, you give me this house, and I know I have this house. And you're not saying the right words or not using the right key to loose the lock. You will die saying, God, you know, I know you give me this house. Yes, he's given you a house. But if you're not using the keys that Christ gave you to use and give me to use, it will stay locked away from you. It will stay locked away from you. And Satan will continue to steal from you. So we have to know how to set ourselves free from the snares. Uh, from the bondage, from the chains, from the, from the traps that Satan have set for us and we have fallen into. We have to know how to lose ourselves. And all of it is in the word of God. Let's turn to Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Forty-nine, read in verse twenty-four, Isaiah forty-nine, read in verse twenty-four. Ready, read. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the law? One more time. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Can or shall the prey, us, be taken from the mighty, Satan, or the lawful captive, meaning those who he have caught lawfully, rightfully, meaning that he have a right to stop us, he have a right to steal from us, he have a right because why? Either we have given him that right, through our words, through agreement, or that one of our ancestors through our bloodline gave him right to get to us. So we have to figure out, first of all, are we caged? Is say, does Satan have me get now? If you're not advancing in life and you're a hard worker and you still cannot seem to get ahead, life isn't going the way you planned it. And every time you get into a relationship or get into something which should be good, it turns out for bad, know for sure that you have been caged. Satan is now destroying your life. He is bringing um, slavery to you, um, bondage. He's bringing delays and backwardness to you. Uh, anything to get you frustrated, to get you out of the will of God, not to have what God have blessed you with from before you were born then know for sure he is still at you and he is winning this battle against you. Whenever Satan comes to you, he comes because God gave him a right to come to you. And a lot of people have to cry, oh God, why me, why me, why me, why me? Why does always happen to me? You letting it happen to you. I hear people and, and they're frustrated, and they're not here to talk about no one because I'm not going to call any there. But using me for an example, I used to do that. For God, you say you can do this for me. 
and you say you're going to do that, but yet God, I'm working hard and nothing happened. And every time, this just keep coming up. Why? Why, God, why is it that you ain't holding up your end of the deal? I serve in you. I'm your child. Why? Why? This always happened to me. And God never answered me, you know. Why? Because I was throwing a pity party, but I was frustrated. And I felt as though because I knew God that everything's supposed to be easy. As a child of God, when you give your life to God, you're thinking now life's supposed to be sweet and it's supposed to be a bed of roses and everybody's just supposed to bow down and, and just, oh, you know, you child, child of God, let me just give you this. No. No, it don't work like that. In fact, it get, it feel like as though it get worse. I give my life to God. I say, all hell break loose. Satan bring that man. Look here. He was like night and shine and armor. He's like, oh, Jesus, look what come across my eye today. But you know the words always was a up from Satan. And I was like, God, that's time I saved now, serving God and loving God. And it was just me and God. And Satan brought that man. I didn't even see him. My friends seemed say, boy, I like him for you. And I say, who? Who you like for me? So you always see that man, you should have got officer. I say no, man. I went to the airport. The airport wasn't even big as this room, but they saw him. But they saw Satan come and get you. I tell you, I was loving on God, going to church and reading my Bible and growing in God, loving God. And they say I like him for you. I say who? Finally, when I did see him, I did see him as a child, as a saved child, as a woman of God. And I look him up and down, and I say. Mm, I say, one, he my type. <laughs> Two, he looked arrogant, full of himself. And I say, three, I know he know God. So I turned on my heel and I went. And they say, you see him there, you see him there. I say, I see him, you see, he look good. Eh? I say, man, you didn't look good. That wasn't my type. So now, Satan only prowl now. That's why you have to be sober and vigilant. We drive home, drop them off. They say, boy, you look good. Eh? I say, look. He my type. Went to work, work for a week, and have to deal with him because I work for the airline, he work for custom, and it's a small place. So I had to see him, and every time I see him, uh, nothing happened. But this time he used to get nervous. He trying to write, he can't even count two and two. He could add two and two together. I said, that's four. He said, yeah, and he said, I said, no, you don't sign there, so you gotta sign down here. Because now Satan and got him confused, he didn't see what he liked. And so, the next fellow come, right along with him, another custom officer come to find out they didn't discuss me. Didn't know they didn't discuss me. So the, the discussion was, oh, I like I gun, get her. And he said it to the one of my friends that like for me. So what he do, when he got off, he gonna come around the corner and he's come talk to me. So I say, God, I for this, I'm feeling this. But of course, now nah, ain't nothing to do. Yeah. Wake them over, you're going home. You're young. Nothing to do. Let's go to lunch. I said, fine. Satan said to me, he wasn't safe, and I know he wasn't safe. I said, God, I know this man wasn't safe. And I was like, Father, ain't nothing to do. <laughs> I say, God, I should have run. But this is how Satan sets you up for the kill. He make it look beautiful, nice. Flowers come, my favorite, roses come, and big like this, and the woman say, oh, he's a keeper. <laughs> I say, miss, you don't even know him. <laughs> and I try to wake, and the flowers come, and I was like, God, something wrong here. But it's so pretty, it looks so nice, and, and they woo you, and they tell you all the things you want to hear. Why? Because Satan is in the cookie. <laughs> and when Satan comes, Satan will never come. He come as an angel of light. He will never come as what he is. He is a devil. He is a deceiver. He comes to do one thing, to kill, steal, and destroy. He come now to come to put hook, line, and sinker in you so that he can start to now pull your life apart. And about a week or two later, I say, okay, now I can see where he at is. I was going to prayer meeting. I say, you want to go to prayer meeting? He say, yeah. <laughs> I 
say, you know, this money is his. <laughs> he didn't tell me no. He ain't make no excuse. Yeah. We go on a prayer meeting, and he's singing. <laughs> and he's singing. So I say, okay, Lord, this man ain't safe. It ain't my job to get him safe. But this is how Satan come, people. He come to now to take your life apart. And if you are not sober and vigilant, if you are not aware of his traps and his trucks and his plans and his schemes, you will fall into the trap. And definitely I fell into that trap. Because the more you spend time with people, whether they are the right people or they are the wrong people, either they're going to pull you or you're going to pull them. And the stronger always pull the weaker. Nothing to do on the island. So of course, I fell into that trap. And the first thing Satan do, because he already see your destiny via your star. Every human being have a star, and the brighter your star happens to be, the more Satan come after you. Why? Because he do not want you to fulfill your God-given purpose on this earth that you have for God. Only you can do what God put you on this earth to do. And he is going to try to, first of all, to kill, kill you. From a child, he was trying to kill me. As a teenager, he's trying to kill me. The first was when my mom was in labor. Tell the nurse to look at the baby coming. The, the nurse going to tell her, I was the, my mom's fourth child, I am. They going to tell this woman who not three children. Giving birth to the fourth one, she, too early for the being in labor. Baby ain't coming. She said, the baby coming. They say, can't be coming. She say, and I, if everybody who know my mom can say, she say, okay. That means I can't catch the baby. <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing, I did come. And the noise come right in time just to catch me. That's the first attempt. Another attempt, I was a, a, a around the age of maybe between six and maybe seven, thereabouts. Running across the road, got knocked down. Um, another attempt was when I was a young adult, no teenager, driving my dad's car, got in an accident. Shortly after that, coming from school, Catching a ride home, got in another accident. Walking, going to the post office, looking at a tree, coconut tree, must is about 100 feet tall. The coconut, dry coconut drop. There was a drunk man in the back of me walking, and the coconut drop, and it grazed my nose right here. Wow. But that drop from about 100 feet up in the air, and had it hit my skull, it was going to crack it open. Yes. The, it dropped, all I saw was the shadow, but I felt it just a graze on the tip of my nose. The drunk, drunk man in the back say, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. He thought it hit me. <laughs> and when it hit the ground, it said, it, 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 it with such a force. I was just, I tell you, tip, tip of my nails. And I look up and see how far that, that road came from. I say, God. After that accident, um, so next time, got in an accident with my white car. Got in an accident with the red car. Got in two accidents with the red car. Got in an accident with this red jeep. And got hit again with the red jeep. All of these attempts on my life, people. When Satan know what your destiny is through via your star, he will try to take you out. And the younger you are, the easier it is for him. So when you learn to know or you come into the knowledge of who you are. And if you go back and you go through your past history and you see how much God has saved you, and those are the only ones I know God saved me from. So many other close calls that I have been in, all because of what God has called you to be. We all have destiny. But if you are caged today, then the prayers that we have to pray is first of all for God to open your eyes so you know what you're caged to. Uh, what is it that Satan is holding over you? 
hindrance, delay, rejection, backwardness, um, stopping your destiny. Have your destiny been reversed? Have it been given to somebody else? Are you, in other words, are you living a life that you were never meant to live? Are you happy with the life that you are living? Do you feel as though you should be um, um, greater or more advanced in life? Is it that you feel as though you've been robbed? All of these are questions that you have to ask yourself to find out if where you are is where you're supposed to be according to what God has purposed you for. A lot of us are in relationships that we should have let go a long time ago. <laughs> we have to know when to walk away, guys. You have to know when to cut the cords because if you don't, that relationship is going to continue to steal from you. You have to know when to let go. You have to know if it's of God. If it's of God, it's going to be for good. It's not going to be for bad. If it's from God, it's for good. Satan will have you. Let me tell you something. I've come across some, uh, some real characters in my life, and I talk with some good friends. But let me tell you something. They was what you call gangsters. <laughs> gangsters. And they say, boy, what do you do? Let me, let me. And they say, they should go blow for blow with mine. And I was like, but how you could do that? <laughs> but you notice the devil on them? Because they ain't gonna let nobody beat them down. And man, you can't blame them, you know, because they fighting. But if you gotta get to that, walk away. Walk away because not every, not every fight you will win, and some fight, fight you might end up losing your life or killing that person and end up losing, going to uh, uh, jail. Does it worth it? Does it worth it? I tell you, when Satan brought that man in my life, I say, God. Shine like a diamond. <laughs> Shine like a diamond. But let me tell you something, the sweetest man, the sweetest man, the sweetest person you want to come along, you want to meet. So it, was a, it, was, it wasn't a hard decision for me to, 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 to make whether I was going to give this a chance or not. It was an easy, easy decision for me to make, simply because one, he was not one for a bunch of noise. He was not one uh, to be known. He was, he was a quiet person. Uh, he knew what he wanted. And so we were, for the most part, on the same road, the same in agreement. Um, but when Satan is in it, I don't care how good it is, it's not going to last. Because his plan is to pull it apart, to destroy it. To destroy it. So you have to know when to walk away. You have to know, say, okay, now, God, I try in this. If this is of, if not of you, shut this down. If, if I am allowing Satan to rob me, to cage me, to, to, to keep me captive in something that is not of you, show it to me. Is it time for me to move off of this job, Father God? I've been here long enough. Do you have more for me? Am I allowing Satan to cage or continue to steal my destiny by prolonging my stay on this job? See, these are the questions that you have to ask yourself to find out exactly if you are where God have you to be in life. There are some evil covenants that us, uh, most of our forefathers have made with Satan uh, or the kingdom of darkness to, to destroy us, to, to keep us, our soul caged or fragmented to where we don't become all that God created us to be. Uh, so there's some prayers that you'll have to pray and there's some fasting that you'll have to do. I remember a couple of years back, well, several years back in 2017, when I prayed the prayer um, for God to, to um, show me what's going on. Why is it that the movement in my life, I felt it should have been moving, uh, wasn't to where it was. And I was crying out for, for help and, and for change for it to be more than just from day-to-day -day existence. And, of course, ended up going on, on these dry fast. Dry fast, people, let me tell you something, it will change your life. If you determine for breakthroughs, if you determine to, to uncage your soul, your, your, uh, or to legally take it back from Satan, 
then be prepared for a fight because Satan isn't just going to let you go that easily. Be prepared to fight. Um, when I went and I did those, try, those dry fasts, plenty of dreams I had, and one of them was um, where there was this bunch of clothes heap up, and, and let me, all of the dreams that I had were showing me where my forefathers uh, on my mother's side was, was tied into Satan's kingdom, and by me going on these fasts and denouncing and canceling and breaking curses and covenants off of me, it actually freed me and freed my daughter. Um, of late, there was one, I went on a fast, and again, asking God, I said, God, I still think this, this should be further movement and advancement. I said, but God, if there's anything else that I haven't um, addressed, then show me. Um, he showed me last year. Last year, I went on a fast. After I prayed that prayer, I went on a five-day dry fast, uh, meaning no water, no liquids, nothing. I didn't eat or drink anything for five days. And during that fast, I had a lot of dreams. One dream was where I was in this little boat on the shore. And these huge, huge white, gray, white snakes uh, came running out of the water. And there was this white snake on the land. And he was like the leader. And it's almost as though he was calling them out of the water. And as they came out of the water, they uh, went into the ground. And the ground was dry, parched, because as they went in, the dust just came up. And I came out of the boat, and let me tell you something. I had a cutlass in my hand. And I started to cut at that snake, and that head would not cut off. And I beat that snake, and I beat that head until it got soft, soft, soft. And so I knew that was showing, God was showing me victory over my ancestors, uh, curses that was lingering over, my, over me from off of my forefathers um, that I inherited. And after that, I had this dream. Actually, before that, I had this dream, and I was before God. Um, this person came to deliver this package to me and I was like, okay, why didn't you just um, leave this in my holding area? And so the person said, because 96 packages are already there and this is 97, there's no space to put it. And in my mind, I was saying in this dream, why didn't no one tell me I have 96 packages down there? This is how Satan delay you. This is God showing me in my dream that the blessings that I was praying and asking him for, he sent. Wow. He sent. But the thief what came to kill, steal, and destroy hid them from me. So the prayers that you're praying and asking God, and you don't see the manifestation, don't think God didn't send them. They have been sent, but of course, hidden. Hidden from you. And when I had that joy, I said, God, hidden. And not too long ago, actually last week, so go, I went on a fast, another fast, seven-day dry fast. A couple of us went on it, and the seven-day dry fast. On the sixth day of this dry fast, uh, I had this dream where someone came and brought me a bag, a car, a, just electronic stuff, everything in packages. And they just came and just drove it right up to me. Nothing open, nothing touch. And I was like, God, now what this is, this is God showing me that everything that he had sent to me, all of the blessings that was hidden, stored away, put away from me, God gave it back to me. Amen. There are times when you are going to have to get serious with wanting what you want from God to do something desperate. I was desperate. I was like, God, something still isn't connecting. Something still is missing. What it is. When you see your life is off track, go to God. God, get my life back on track. Show me how to get this on track. Something is missing. I still don't feel like I've tapped into all that you have given to me. Because if he promised you that no good thing will he hold from you who walk right in him, that means every area of your life is blessed. You shouldn't have to be catching no bus. You should be able to go out there and drive the latest. You shouldn't have to be being robbed by your job because they feel like they didn't make a big enough profit to give you a raise. That shouldn't have to be. You shouldn't have to be in no relationship with this person feel as though um, you, you lucky to have, you, you should be lucky they, they, they keeping you. 
Uh, they is the only one benefiting from this relationship. But they'll make you think that. Hmm? See, we have to know who we are. If you are in God, you are, you are given the best things. And not, not to say for you to worship, but for them to, in, to bring enjoyment to your life. So that you can get along doing what God has you to do. That's right. Bills are paid, but you have to believe that the bills are paid. You have a home, but you have to believe that you have a home. Yes. And so if you ask God for a home and you only see it here, get desperate. Yeah, because right. know for sure God have already loosed it. Amen. So get desperate to do something different. I was desperate. That means I desperate enough not to put drink in my mouth, not to put food in my mouth. For seven days, people. For seven days. For five days. When I say, God, I want more of you, I get desperate and say, God, I want more of you. I stop eating, I stop drinking. Why? Because I desire a spiritual thing. I desire something spiritual. Meaning that my spirit man now needs to grow. My spirit man is looking for more from God. And so you have to get desperate. Don't stay in a situation that you feel like it like ain't going right. Let me tell you something. God say to us, I have already given you the best that I could give you. There is nothing better out there than what I have already given to you. You have to understand that here. So if he feel as though, or she feel as though, um, that's the best thing you're going to get, they're the best thing you're going to get, then you need to pack your bag and walk away. Because if anyone can make you feel like that, they don't value you. They don't value you. Not only that, you don't know how valuable you are. You have to know how valuable you are to God. So valuable that you don't have to fight for anything natural. He gave it to you, all of it. Naturally, it belongs to you. But you have to know that he really came and did what he had to do, and he went. But he didn't leave you a captive. He didn't leave you a captive. Let's turn to Luke 4. Luke 4. Read in verse 18. Luke 4, read in verse 18. Ready, read. Upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. One more time. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering sight to the blind, to set the liberty in the So this is Jesus now. He said, He said, He have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To heal the broken hearted. See, when Jesus, what Jesus did, Jesus didn't halfway did his job. He didn't do halfway his assignment. He completed, he finished it. So the, all of your broken hearts, whether it be broke today or, or, or in the future, he have already healed it. He have already delivered you. He said deliverance to the captives. That means the ones who sold. This is not natural captivity. This is spiritual bondage he's talking about. And he freed you from it. Why? Because he loved you. Because he loved you, he gave his life for you. To give sight to the blind. To open up your spiritual eyes. Understanding. So that you can have the life that he died to give you. Everything that belongs um, to God belongs to you. Everything he given it to you. Through, through Christ Jesus. So you get this in Christ Jesus. Your blessings God have given to you that you may have life and have life more abundantly. He came to set, set, set at liberty them that are bruised, set, set free. 
set free. You done set free. So don't allow Satan now to keep you in bondage. Don't allow Satan now to keep you uh, kidnapped, keep you captive. And I'm talking spiritually. Because anything that happened naturally on this earth first took place in the spiritual realm. And so we have to realize that, that when Satan come up against you, he come up against you to kill, steal, and destroy. Don't allow him. Don't give him that kind of power over you. Ask God, to, God, if is my soul fragmented today? Is my soul been, is caged, bottled, hid, buried? Where is it? What's going on with my soul? You, got him, you, you can come to God and ask him that. Let's go to Ezekiel 13. Ezekiel 13. Reading 20. Ezekiel 13, verse 20. Ready? Read. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye fly, and I will tear them, and will let the souls go. Amen. One more time. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillars, wherewith ye have souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. So it goes to show you right there your souls can be caged. Your soul, if your soul is caged today, Satan. Satan right now can make you do whatever he wants you to do. Because lawfully, legally, he have your soul. He own it. But you can take it from him today. You can take it. Don't let him sell your soul because he can sell it too. Let's go and turn to um, Revelation 18. Revelation 18. Read in verses 12 and 13. Revelation 18, read in verses 12 and 13. Ready, read. The merchandise of gold, silver, and precious stones, and of pearls, and fine linen, and purple, and scarlet, and all wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and meat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots. the last piece and souls of men it says look, look what it says the merchandise meaning that they sell your soul your soul can be sold as merchandise so you want to ask yourself God am my soul caged has Satan sold it is it fragmented fragmented meaning pieces how much pieces are my, is, is my soul in? Because if Satan own it through evil covenants or through the words that we have spoken and given him um, a legal right to come and destroy, then you got to pray and take it back from him. Other than that, what life are you destined to have? What you have now, is that good enough for you? Are you happy with that? 
A lot of people keep starting over in life. Being delayed, set back, over and over and over. Why? Because their soul is not their soul. Say it and own it. You don't want to be another five years later and you're still in the same position. So your soul, if there are evil covenants in your lineage or you've given it to Satan, then you have to take it back that you may have the life that God has given to you. So many of God's children are sitting back and let me tell you something. Right? Let me tell you something now. Some of these pastors, they just need to just take it. But I ain't going to say it. Because let me tell you something. They, they, they do in the body of Christ so much harm. And this is the reason why you cannot trust your, your, your life. You cannot trust your life, your soul, in no one's hands other than God. Other than God. Because if they're not studying, at least love God enough and love God's children enough to, to study this word to bring truth and to not bring dogma, false um, doctrine, false religion, and just say what come off the top of the head because it's, it sounds good or it sounds religious, then, then um, God's children are going to be snared, going to be caged. And when they think now that they're on their way to heaven, bus hell wide open. The church is there to train God's children, to teach them the word so that they know how to stand on the word of God, how to pray, how to fight, who to fight, when to fight, what to pray, how to pray, who to pray to, who to believe in, what to do when your back is against the wall, how do I trust, who do I trust, why do I trust. We are, they, they are, the church is here to develop the children of God, to bring them from infancy into mature adults in the word, that they know how to rightly divide the word of truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to bring it throughout the, the world. We are here to herald it, to proclaim it, to preach it, to help set God's children free. It's not about it being a job about the money, about people knowing your name. It's not about that. So if your life, in your eyes, in your own opinion, in your own mind, if you feel as though your life isn't where it's supposed to be, then the prayers we will say today is for God to lose your soul. Because if it was soul, you need to get it back. If it was sold by your forefathers, you need to get it back. If you sold it because of the words you have did or what you have partake, um, partaken in, then you still have to get it back. But you have the right to do it, and only you can do it. It's on you to do it. There's no use spending another two years, three years in the same situation you're in just to say, oh, my soul must be uh, um, caged for truth. No. If you go back now in your mind, you can tell if you are progressing the way you're supposed to. Um, we don't have to feel as though Satan stops. Satan stop people now. As children of God, Satan will try to stop you. But we have to be vigilant and sober. We have to pay attention to, to our lives. We have to pay attention to what's going on. Let's turn to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Read in verse 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2, read in verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 2, read in verse 18. Ready, read. Wherefore he would have. Even I call. 
before time? Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. So who hindered them? Satan. And this Paul is an apostle of Jesus Christ. It's telling you he was hindered by who? Satan. Satan delay us, he hinder us, he stop us, he set um, roadblocks for us. Not man, not people, not your boss, nobody. Nobody can stop you. People don't stop you. It's all spiritual. People don't stop you. Satan uses people as a vessel. Just so our father uses people. Just vessels. So if you feel as though you are being delayed, hindered, stopped, things ain't moving, or you're stuck, then you got to get unstuck. And it's on you. It's on me. The life that God, Jesus, died to give us, if you feel as though you have that life, then God is good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just continue to be sober and vigilant and continue to press. And, and allow God to build you and grow you more and more spiritually so that uh, you know uh, how to fight because Satan will never stop coming up against you. He'll always continue to fight because his goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. His desire is to take you to hell for all eternity. So even if you feel you're on the right track, still, uh, you still have to be sober and vigilant. Don't let your guard down. Because that's all Satan is waiting on. That's all Satan is waiting on. So we have to pray now um, to make sure that our soul is freed, that it's not caged any longer. Uh, so let's turn to Psalm. No, not yeah, the book of Psalms. Um, reading verse 24. Psalms. 124. Psalm 124. Read in verse 7. Psalm 124. Read in verse 7. Ready? Read. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. One more time. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. All right, so we're going to, like I say, our soul can get escaped tonight, today. Because there's no use going from day to day, and you're not sure. If you are free, if Satan kidnap you, if he kidnap you, Jesus already paid the ransom, amen? That's right. So we're going to be free this morning because it's no use trying and trying and trying in your own strength to free yourself or trying and trying and trying for your, your career to move forward if your soul is caged. I mean, Satan just having a little show with us and, oh, let me see your fight you get. Oh, let me see. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. So we're going to do that this morning uh, to make sure that you have the life that God has, has died, to, Christ has died to give you and, and, to, and me. Your life should be a happy life, a good life. You should feel, when you wake up, you should feel happiness. You should feel joy throughout the day. You should be saying, God, I thank you for this life you've given to me. Father, I am so happy because I know you, God. You place and given me such peace in my life. If you, if you don't wake up like that now, then there, that means you just need to be, there's some more deliverance need to come your way. And that's all it means. doesn't mean that you can't get there. You, you, could, you could get there. You know, but you have to make up your mind you want it. A lot of God's children, they want it but they're not willing to fight for it. Every year they want to hear, oh, this is your year. This is your breakthrough. This is your turnaround. Oh, turn around, slap your neighbor five and tell them, 
stay alive. Huh? All, <laughs> kind of, all kind of real. I'm all lucky. It, it, it's just so. <laughs> Guys, let me tell you something. That don't fix the situation, though. You come out there, you feel high. And then you get in the car, the devil come and jump right back on you. That ain't the way, um, that ain't the way you as a child of God are supposed to feel. You're supposed to feel on a natural high every day. Every day you should feel like as though you're on cloud nine. Because that's how I feel every day. Now I tell you, test don't come my way, test has come. But I've learned to give, give the test to God and say, okay God, if you allow this to come, this is coming for my glory, this is coming for good for me. So instead of seeing test as a oh, dome and gloom, my look here, I be, I be happy. Because I know when this test and finish, I know God got a blessing for me. So I don't, I don't see tests and trials now as something bad. I see it now as something good to advance me, to grow me, to strengthen me, to get me deeper in my God, to be able to fight against better the wiles of the devil. So tests and trials come to grow you, to strengthen you, to encourage you, to give you the patience that you need, but to bring up your faith and trust in God and to get you deeper and deeper in God that you produce more and more fruit. That's the bottom line of a test too. So if, 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 you, if you're crying about a test, um, talk, dry them tears and say, Father, I'm going through this because when I come out, I know something better is coming my way. Amen. And that's what test is about. You know, not, not for you to say, oh God, I can't do this no more. Um, I tie it. I've learned not to say tie it, and I learned to say I can't do this no more. I stopped saying those words because when you say that, and the next set of words where I've learned many years ago not to say, what next? Because let me tell you something, Satan gonna bring what next. Do not say what next. I don't matter how it feel. Do not say what next. That's the agreement for Satan to bring more hell to you. Don't say what next. I've heard too many people used to, oh, what next, what next? And next has come. Because what you're saying, you are actually saying, Satan, well, what next? Yes. What next? And you know, some of us, we think we're so big and bad, we say, come, Satan, come. Yeah. You can't take Satan on. Use wisdom. Don't tell Satan, come. Because when he might come with you, come, but he can't talk. So we have to use wisdom as children, as saints of God. We have to use wisdom. Don't destroy yourself by words. But yeah, God got your back. But when you put this out there, whatever you put out there, you come into agreement with God. You come in agreement with Satan. God, Satan going to God. Say, well, God, you hear what you hear they say. God can say, well, they did say they come in agreement with you. Go. So we have to be so careful what we do. Another thing we need to stop, we need to stop looking at people as our enemy. People are not our enemy. Stop hating people. Love people. Stop beating up people. Stop saying, but come to the, the dirtiest, nastiest things you want to say to them to hurt their feelings. Don't do that. And then when they give it back to you, you can't take it. You, we cannot look at people and attack people. Don't attack people. Because if you attack people, you are going against the commands of God. Because he said we are to love them as we love ourselves. So learn to love people like you love you. And learn to love God above all and everything. And if you get that right and you could stay in that, it will keep you from anger. It will keep you, keep you from, from um, hating people the way you don't want to forgive them. You know, keep unforgiveness out of your heart. Because we have to learn to forgive people. We have to because that's one of the root causes that causes us not to hear or receive from God. Anger, bitterness, hate. To where you can't forgive somebody. Yeah, they might hurt you. And I'm not saying that, that your hurt wasn't real. But what I am saying is if you allow um, unforgiveness to ride you, it will ride you and ride you until you get to the point where it becomes a stronghold. And if it becomes a stronghold, you are sinning against God and you're on your way to hell. So forgive them. If they hit you, if they hurt you, forgive them and ask God to heal you because it means you need healing. If you cannot forgive somebody who hurt you, you need healing. You need healing. And it's okay to ask for healing. Jesus, we just read it. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He said, you're going to be broken. You're going to be broken. But when you get broken, nowhere, no who can put the pieces back together. Only God can. 
Because leave it up to us, we'll end up hating these people for life. When it's going against the word of God. If you go against the word of God, you are given Satan a legal right to keep your soul caged. To keep you in captivity. You don't want that. You want the life that God has died for you. Love you enough to lose people. Love you enough to get over the hurt. Love you enough to give your heart that is broken to God. The healer. He is the healer. Love you enough. Love you enough. Stop letting your flesh get in your way. Because if you die now, what do you think will happen to you? Thank you.